All right, so are you ready to edit your first image in GIMP? If so, that's exactly what we're going to do in this tutorial. So let's go up to File, click on Open. You're going to navigate to your Section 1 folder, and you're going to select the O1 image, and you're going to go ahead and open that. So this is the image that we're going to be working on. And as you can see, it's kind of flat. There's not a lot of contrast in the image, and that's due to the highlights and the shadows, or maybe it's the blacks and the whites of the tonal range that are missing detail. And we're going to find out which one it is with the levels tool, which is going to show us the histogram of the particular image. But first, let me show you my final edit. So this is the edit that I created for this project. And as you can see, it has a lot more contrast than the original image. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. Add some contrast and make it pop. So we're going to start off with the levels tool, and then I'm going to show you a different tool to add contrast because I prefer the second one better, but it's nice to know more than one way to edit an image. That way you can decide which one is best for you. So we're going to go up to colors and we're going to click on levels. So the levels tool shows you the histogram of the image. And if you've ever taken one of my photography courses before, then you may already know everything you need to know about the histogram. But for those of you that do not, we're going to take a quick tour over the histogram so you can get an idea of what we're going to do for this particular edit. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab a corner here so I can drag this out and make this a little larger to make it easier to see. So the histogram is made up of the different tones of your image, and that includes the blacks, which are over here on the left. Then we have the shadows. We have the mid tones in the middle. Then we have the highlights, the whites on the right. And then we have what is known as the black and the white points, which are pure white and pure black. So we have our black point right here, and that's designated by this little icon right here and the white point is over here. Now we have some detail missing in the image, which is causing the image to have a low amount of contrast. And we can see that there's a gap on the right side and a gap on the left side. So the blacks and the whites in this case are missing detail. So what we want to do is we want to fill in that gap and that's going to add a contrast to the image. So we're going to grab our black point here and drag it to the edge of the histogram on the right side here. I'm going to go ahead and make this smaller now. And we can see that the image is darker and that's already adding some contrast. We're going to do the same thing with the white point now. We're going to click and drag that over to the left side here. So I have 238 for the white point, 11 for the black point. And that creates contrast in the image and fills in those gaps. Now, another thing you can do with the levels tool is you can target individual color channels. And I like to use these for removing color casts in my image. For example, if you find that the image is too red, you can drag the midpoint here to the right to remove that red and it's going to add green instead. Or if you want to add red, move it to the left. Okay, so since I'm not a big fan of this particular tool, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this and go to my favorite tool for adding contrast, which is the curves tool. It's a little bit more advanced, but it does provide more precision and control over the levels tool. So let's go ahead and grab that by going up to colors and clicking on curves. Now, just like with the levels tool, we do have a histogram in the back, but this time, instead of applying our adjustments along a horizontal line, we're going to manipulate this linear line that goes from the bottom left to the top right. The top right here represents the white point. So this little circle, if we grab that and pull it down, it's going to make adjustments to the white point. Down here, we have our black point. So I can drag this to the right and make it darker that way. But what I want to do to create the contrast for this image is I want to manipulate this linear line along the blacks and the shadows and the whites and the highlights so I can pinpoint where that adjustment is going to be applied along that tonal range and it's going to be more subtle versus linear like we had with the levels tool. So we're going to click right around here 
and you're gonna click and drag down. That's gonna make the image darker and then that line begins to bend. So it creates a subtle transition from our edit from this point and it slowly diminishes as it gets up to this part of the tonal range. So this part of the tonal range really isn't being affected by this adjustment down here. Now, if I click and drag up, that's going to make the whites and the highlights brighter. So by doing that, we add contrast with what is known as an S curve, because now this linear line looks like an S curve, and this gives you the control and the precision to apply that contrast exactly where you want it in the image, because now I can come in and say, okay, I'm gonna take this anchor point and move it up a little bit higher, and that's going to make an adjustment based on that new location versus where it was down here. So it's a lot flatter up here than it is down here. So you can make this adjustment based on your own creative vision and your own personal editing style. The other thing you can do now is you can continue adding additional anchor points along this line now in order to target specific points of the tonal range. For example, you can come in here and click in the midpoint here and adjust the midtones of the image and make adjustments that way because maybe that contrast was too much and you wanna flatten it out a little bit, you can do that. And then I can come in here and target this part of the tonal range as well. So you can make these adjustments based on your own creative vision, just like I mentioned. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this right here and I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And now we have our finished edit. How cool is that? I love the Curves tool for applying contrast. All right, before we continue on with the next tutorial, I want you to keep this image open. And that's because we're gonna continue working on this image in the next tutorial. And I'm gonna show you how to retouch this image by removing blemishes and the stray hair 